Hey folks, thanks for tuning in and welcome to my van. Yes, we are in my van. I'm on a road trip currently and I'm visiting family for the first time in what seems like forever. And so today's video is gonna happen from right here. Your bike and the way you carry gear on it is personal preference, right? Some of us like to carry the kitchen sink while others like to go a little bit lighter. I like to carry a little bit less on my bike because it creates a better overall experience. Not only that, but it also gives the bike a more natural feel or similar to how it was designed to be ridden. Shooting this video in the van reminds me of the luxuries that we have even while car camping. You know, we have lights, we've got this nice big stove, a way to carry cold beer. But for bike packing, you're more or less living with the essentials. So in this video, I'm going to share some ways to not only reduce weight on your bike, but reduce weight from your bike packing kit. Now, some of these ideas are going to be spendy, while others just take a little bit of sacrifice and teamwork. Also in this video, we are going to talk about some of the most ridiculous items that you have all carried. We asked you a handful of days prior to this video, some of the most ridiculous things that are in your bike packing kit. So we're gonna share those towards the end of the video and I think you're gonna be a little surprised about some of the items. So number one, if you're bike packing with a group or even just another person, being able to share gear will definitely reduce weight. This is not only gonna help you save weight, but it's gonna allow you to either ditch a bag altogether, run a smaller bag, or be able to pack that item that you really, really need. Some items that I would consider sharing are a shelter or tent. You can split that up by uh, the actual tent, the ground tarp, the poles, what have you. Another good shareable option is your cook kit. Somebody can carry the stove, somebody else can carry the pot, uh, or fuel. Another option is your water filter, just bringing one water filter for two of you or for a group. And obviously your repair kit or first aid kit, just making sure that you actually have all of your repair kit items that you need for both bikes. So another way to reduce weight is to use smaller bags. This idea basically forces you to pack more efficiently. You could use a smaller capacity handlebar roll, smaller capacity seat pack, or just ditch the accessory bag altogether. When you have more space to pack things, well, you tend to actually use that space for things that you probably don't need. So if you don't have more space, you can pack more efficiently and create a lighter load. While carbon may not be for everyone, it's hard to deny that carbon is one of the top ways of reducing weight on your bike. Not only that, but carbon dampens vibrations better than aluminum. So over the course of a bike packing trip, having something or having a component that absorbs that shock is definitely welcomed. Over the years, I typically find myself upgrading my wheels, my handlebars, and my cranks on most bikes that I own. For instance, I just got a Salsa Timberjack and it's actually just back here. And I ended up swapping out the wheels, the handlebars, the crank, and I also ended up going tubeless, and I ended up saving one pound, seven ounces, which is a lot of weight. So not only going with carbon bits, but just upgrading parts in general and going tubeless is a huge way to help save weight on your bike. Similar to those carbon bits, upgrading your sleep kit can be expensive, but it's a very easy way of reducing weight. Tents are typically one of the heaviest pieces of gear that you're going to be carrying, so upgrading there is very beneficial. A nice tent can be a big purchase, but when you're on your bike packing trip, your tent is your home, and having a nice home is important. Big Agnes recently launched their new Tiger Wall bike pack specific tent that comes with shorter poles. It works really well for bike packing, and I actually reviewed that not long ago, and I'll link that below. But that tent comes in at two pounds, seven ounces, which is not that heavy. If you're looking for something even lighter than that, there's some single wall Dyneema tarp tent options out there. Logan reviewed the tarp tent Aeon, which is a super light tent. It only comes in at one pound. And then you could obviously look at just tarp options or just bivy sacks in general. Another option is upgrading your sleeping bag and down sleeping bags are wonderful. And most of them now are treated so that they can handle moisture. You can always supplement a lighter sleeping bag with a clothing system to keep you warmer at night. I typically use this Big Agnes Pluton 40 degree bag paired with my down jacket and my long johns just to stay a little bit warmer. And if it's really cold, I'll even throw in some wool socks in my kit. But this bag itself just packs down next to nothing and weighs next to nothing as well. Another option is with sleeping pads. And while I don't like to skimp here too much, some sleeping pads come in a shorter variety. And so I typically go with that. Not only does that save weight, but it also saves space in your pack. Clothing, while it's important, is another way to not only save weight, but also space. 
A lot of times I like to just carry some long johns and those long johns will not only replace my camp pants, but also boxers. I try to also bring layers that not only work while I'm riding my bike, but also at camp. In general, I just try not to bring things that I don't need, extra items such as like bibs. I don't need extra bibs if I'm doing a shorter trip. Maybe if I'm getting into four, five, six days, I'll bring an extra pair of bibs and socks. But in general, just reducing excess will go a long way. Another weight saver is not carrying a specific camp shoe, but relying on your trail shoe for camp. This is the Alp X SPD, and I've been using this shoe for quite a while, and I'm going to do a review on this in the not too distant future. When I'm looking for a trail shoe, I'm trying to find something that not only is comfortable while I'm riding the bike, but obviously comfortable at camp. So something that has a little bit of flex to it, something that's a little bit roomy, and just in general comfortable to walk around in. Water is hands down the heaviest thing that we carry, and for good reason, it's essential. And there are times that we need to carry quite a bit, especially in hot, dry conditions or before camp so that we have water for dinner and breakfast. But when you're carrying three liters and you're passing a gazillion streams every hour, it's kind of pointless. So for me, I like to do my research and carry my water filter in a strategic location so that I can filter water more often and not have to carry it. So what have we learned? Well, each piece of gear and component on the bike adds up in weight. So dialing those things in, understanding the weight should definitely help you minimize the weight of your overall bike packing rig, which just might help you get up that hill a little bit faster. All right, so now it's time to share some of your ridiculous, most crazy, heaviest items that you've carried on your bike packing trip. And uh, let's just start right off with Graham. Graham mentions that he brought a 65 pound military TV for a bachelor party. And just to put that into perspective, most of your bike packing bikes aren't even 65 pounds. That's impressive. Ryan McCord mentions that he brought a large inflatable ducky raft. That sounds like fun. Sign me up. Jeremy Nolan mentions that he brought 14 pounds of dried beans. Dried beans, A, take a while to cook, and 14 pounds is very heavy. Good work, Jeremy. Ben O'Brien mentions that he brought a five-pound bag of frozen shrimp. So hopefully it thawed out while they rode and then boiled them. That would be delicious, especially on a bikepacking trip. All right, so Lance Harris mentions that he learned how to bikepack with a 70-liter backpacking bag with everything in it the kitchen sink in his backpacking bag that's impressive and that just goes to show that you can bike pack any way but you kind of figure out quickly what works and what doesn't nice work lance austin osborne mentions that he brought a short-handed shovel a handsaw and a u.s forest service radio he used to work for them and i think he was gonna do some trail work out there but he never ended up using them so it kind of goes to show what you need to bring and what you want to bring and the difference between the two this is a wonderful one. Mario Rodriguez mentions that he brought his flute along, but people next to his camp would offer him food and shelter for him to quit playing. I'd like to hear you, Mario, because I'm sure you're great. All right, Robin and Gina, two completely unrelated people, both bring Rubik's Cubes with them. So help stimulate the mind, maybe pass some time. I like it. Brody Levin, we published a video a handful of years ago about his ski trip but he brought an enormous moose antler. I'm not sure if he found it on the side of the trail or just brought it from the start of his trip, but that's impressive to say the least. And maybe my favorite one of all, Jess Crocker brought a five-year-old kiddo. And that just goes to show you that you can bike pack even with the kids. So we got over 100 responses, so I want to thank you all for participating. A handful of others, people brought extra tools. I think a hammer was on the list. Oh, an electric razor was on the list. Musical instruments, banjo, ukulele, skateboards, surfboards, split boards were all on the list. A whole roll of duct tape, hula hoops, and then there was a ton of folks that mentioned that they carried things that they found on the side of the trail, a football, uh, some other items. So I also appreciate that just because, while well, you're cleaning up the environment. All right, so now it's your turn to share what ridiculous items you have brought along on your bikepacking trip. Leave it in the comment section below. And I'd also like to hear if you have any suggestions on ways to save weight on your bike and your bikepacking rig. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you like what you see in this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to help us out a little bit more, consider joining the Bikepacking Collective, which is bikepacking.com's annual membership. That's linked below so that you can check that out. Thank you all so much for the support. 
And until next time, pedal further. Thank you.